Welcome everyone, Simon here from the Wales of Wall Street. We have an interesting new project video here, guys, uh, called Gaimin, G-A-I-M-I-N. It's not on the exchange yet. This is why I'm doing this video. Um, many of you have been following the channel for a long time. You will know that in my background, I've got uh, gaming uh, consoles right next to me, of course, the N64, the SNES, uh, got PS1, Atari, pretty much most of them. Uh, so gaming's in my blood ever since I was a young child and uh, certainly something I've always had a passion towards, you know, from a hobby perspective. I go to a lot of gaming events here and there amongst all the other stuff that I do. Um, but of course, in the last probably five or six years, there's been huge development in this area with the utilization of blockchain gaming. Now, I'm not going to go into the massive technical aspects of that purely because we did a GameFi dedicated video to this a couple of weeks ago if you haven't watched it it should be up on the screen now obviously watch this one first and then put that one on your watch later or something or watch it at the end where i'll leave a link as well uh, some interesting data in there statistical data of why this gaming market is so big in general uh, the history about that but then also what we anticipate moving forwards utilizing web3 gaming protocol so a very very quick snippet this is introduction of things like play to earn watch to earn uh, the ability for computerizing power to go through the likes of ai and cloud and the utilization of course of blockchain for the transparency the validation the processing the transactions all of those things that we mentioned in the previous video now this platform gaming uh, it's not a new concept um there was a a company or a project like ultra io for example uh, with the uos token which is still available of course on exchanges uh, i followed that quite extensively for a number of years um, and certainly in 2021 i sold off a big batch of that um, and i i understood the concept of it um, it was one of the first proper platforms that was coming out to be dedicated with the utilization of being a platform for games to be hosted on created on and ultimately a monetary aspect to this as well uh, but of course, things develop and improve and evolve all of the time. Um, now, some of these platforms that have been around for a few years have kind of maybe not necessarily disappeared, but they've gone a bit quiet. Uh, and that's not what you want as a gamer. If you're looking to build you know, the next batch of audience to your platform, you need continuation. You need a forefront plan, something that goes forwards, right? Because otherwise, you're just going to lose people's interest and they're just going to go to other platforms and just continue playing the games, whether it's console, PC, on other platforms as well. Now, I'm a, I've got a Steam account. Um, I've had Shadow Gaming in the past, and that's quite relevant to this topic as well because gaming is a really, really interesting project that kind of opens up all of these things globally for a gamer. And even if you're not into gaming, you'll be very interested from an investor's perspective to see how this could go, or at least the market opportunity here uh, for the return on investment potentially on the token usage, ultimately, of course, the price and the markets eventually, um, but also from that, you know, the utility aspect and um, how many people are actually potentially going to be using this. So, uh, guys, let's go straight into this one. Uh, before we do, don't forget, of course, to make sure, if you haven't done so already, to smash that subscribe button. Welcome to the channel if you are new. We've got a load of different topics and discussions, um, as we, you may have seen if you've uh, been on the, with us for some time. Here's the GameFi one, by the way. Go and check that out. It's really interesting. Uh, but this is where I wanted to start, guys. For those that are interested or to know a bit more about the kind of gaming market, um, so first and foremost, this relates to uh, the BNB chain, so Binance's BNB chain, and this is ultimately a partnership between Gaming uh, to help fluctuate this um, the progress of this project. Now, it's this statistic here that's really interesting. So there's two components, in my opinion, to gaming moving forward. You've got the actual playing aspect of it, and you've got the streaming slash watching capabilities as well. So first and foremost, let's talk about Gaming in general is absolutely staggering, but look at this. The global blockchain gaming market is projected to grow from $4.6 billion in 2022 to $65.7 billion in 2027. Now, that's quite interesting. Uh, huge amounts of numbers, of course. But, I mean, look at this. This is by 2030, $600 billion in total. You've got gamers out there, guys. Um, and we'll go into a bit of statistics about that in a second because... Uh, we did mention this in the gaming video, but at the moment, um, you're, you're anticipating uh, well over 2 
billion users of gamers out there. And this is uh, something that I've researched for many years. Probably 2014 slash 15 was the first time uh, I worked for a really cool networking company who had uh, gaming routers and things like this, power lines, etc. And one of my tasks was as an esports partnership manager um, to generate interest with esports participants or teams. Uh, at that time was Team Dignitas. It was really exciting. I think they got sold for like $49 million or something to an NBA team in America. It's quite quite a, a mental few months that was. Uh, but the point being is that I did a lot of research, had to do a lot of pitching and documentation around research around the global markets and why actually that we should also, as a company, move from, well, not necessarily move from, but add to the string of bows that we have to penetrate the gaming market with our products, okay? Everyone and everyone uses the internet, but gamers need something specific, for sure, uh, in terms of bandwidth, data capacities, the speeds, uh, the connectivity, even if it's Wi-Fi or Ethernet connected. So there's a huge amount of gamers out there. The other statistic on top of this one that we got in front of our screen here is the live streaming audience. This is incredible. So when I was doing the research documentation, I'll have to dig out the presentation. I think I might have shown it in a video a couple of years ago uh, for a laugh. It was really cool. Um, but I think around that time, there was a, a roughly around 700 million people worldwide watching games. Now, this is quite crazy because at the moment, from the statistics I've been looking at, it's around about 920 million at the moment. So it's a, there's a big jump, two or, two or 300 million in a short space of time. But what's really interesting, by 2025, they anticipate 1.4 billion people watching games. This is not talking about what we see here uh, with the actual market. We're talking about people here. How many people will be using the streaming market? 1.4 billion by 2025 watching games not playing them watching them i'm sure they play games as well so you've got <laughs> you've got this staggering number already of of three i think it's like three billion gamers now when, when i first did those statistics in 2015-16 i think it was around 1.8 slash 2.1 billion uh, but now we're progressing to these huge numbers and what's really exciting and interesting is we've had now the development in blockchain to have this opportunity for the play to earn mechanism again i'm not going to massive detail about that but it's important to just pinpoint these few quick bits and pieces to explain gaming a bit more as well so you've got this play to earn mechanism you've got a watch to earn mechanism then you've also got a gaming platform that can have unique specific titles on it but also titles that we know very well so we come back to this point here this is gaming okay the website uh, or the company itself has actually been around for a number of years. And what that's quite exciting to me because it means that they've been focusing on a lot of development, a lot of patience and progress has been made for sure. And it's one of those things where exactly to my point earlier, I saw a lot of platforms launching in 2021. I felt like a lot of them got rushed because they wanted to take advantage of the market rush that we had in 2021. If, if those that were around at that time in the space would know exactly what I'm talking about. And it seemed like when the market disappeared, went into a winter market, we were pretty much still coming out of most of it at the moment. I wouldn't say it disappeared off the face of the earth, but it kind of stopped. And again, to my point, as a gamer, that's not what you want from a platform. So there's a few really interesting mechanisms here. You've got the esports aspect, which we just kind of mentioned on there. You've got also the game distribution gamer experience platform. Now, again, Ultra IO and a few other platforms did this. This is kind of like the equivalent of you buying a game on the App Store or the Google Play Store. There's usually a significant cost and fee for a developer to, first of all, post their game on. Uh, but then also for sometimes, in some cases, people have to pay for the games. Um depending on what game it is, of course. And most people, or most games now have like in-app purchases, et cetera, et cetera, like you kind of see with Epic Games and all of those kind of uh, producers or platforms. So you've got this aspect of an ability of people saving a lot of money with this. And then you've got this as well. This is one of the key factors to me, cloud computing economy of the future. What does this mean? So I mentioned shadow gaming before. This is something that was uh, presented to me back in uh, maybe like 2019. I had a really awful internet connection at home, not massively great. I could go on shadow gaming, which is still available today. I think there's even like a mini console that you can buy to use it as a machine as well. But the idea was that through a browser and log in, um, 
sign up it took like a couple of weeks for them to set it up and the reason that is is because there's servers in France I don't know if that's still the case now but there's servers in France that you get access to and it basically mirrors to your laptop or your PC whatever you're using so on my laptop I went from this awful <laughs> work laptop to mirroring a system in France that had over one gigabyte of speed instead of the awful 15 20 meg that I had at home and I could have my Steam account on there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the only disadvantage at the time was that I had to kind of like orchestrate a Steam account for a VPN because it was coming up with the France account, et cetera. But they've worked on all of that w since then. We're talking about a few years back now. So I was able to finally play all the really cool, funky games that I just didn't have, one, the processing power for, and two, the connection for. So it's, it's a really bizarre concept because you're essentially streaming a uh, mirrored screen and i was playing at one gig speeds through this awful internet connection at home which is amazing and playing games fluently seamlessly you know things like uh, sky skylines etc powerful games now that's really cool but the other thing that's coming into fruition here about cloud computing right now and with web3 in particular and blockchain is the ability to share processing power it sounds mental, it sounds bizarre, but think of that concept I just mentioned about shadow gaming, and you can partially apply that, or some of that at least, to the cloud-based gaming. Now, AI is coming in as well to help orchestrate the algorithms of this, to orchestrate the data consumption, passing, sharing around. And I've mentioned specifically many times on like energy-related sector market uh, assets that we cover like energy web that peer-to-peer -peer trading is coming for carbon credits and you'll be able to share essentially share off the top level energy with other people even across the world how do you do that and it's basically the utilization of the web3 orientation hub spots etc to coordinate that and utilizing tokens or tokenization of an asset to be able to pass around and this similar aspect is coming into fruition for gpus graphic processing units and all of these kind of things so you can start sharing off multitude of servers or cloud systems the processing power to either help you develop games or host them or for you for anyone out there to be able to access the gaming platforms wherever you are so this is, for example, gaming's cloud, decentralized cloud computing platform that utilizes the, com I always get this wrong, computational power of the gaming platform using the power of AI rendering and blockchain computations. By passively monetizing their idle computing resources, gamers can earn rewards while contributing to the creation of a sustainable and socially responsible digital future. The gaming cloud offers access to instantly accessible, instantly scalable, robust, cost-effective data processing capabilities to individuals and organizations helping to promote innovation, economic growth, and social progress in communities around the world. So hitting the numbers for the ESG for sure. Estimated 1.6 billion gaming PCs, just gaming PCs, that's not including all the ones we mentioned earlier, represents a total of $500 billion worth of GPU processing power waiting to be utilized. You've got three markets we're talking about now, guys. A multi-multi-billion gaming market, a multi-multi-billion GPU processing power market. This is phenomenal. So as I said, there are some other platforms similar. This is the first one I've come where across where I'm like, this is almost feels like it's a full complete system with the exception of the fact that the token relation is not launched yet and we'll come on to that in a second uh, but i just think it's very important to understand this now those that develop games out there i don't know if anyone listens who is a, a gaming developer or whatever you'll know this more than i do but i know these uh, for sure so gaming's proprietary uh, gaming craft developer tools sdk api allow a game developer to quickly and easily add web3 functionality features and benefits to any existing game any existing game this is absolutely huge guys and this is great for esports people uh, or players who want that extra ability of cloud computing or computing in general gpu etc uh, the ability to access games to monetize whether that's advertising whether it's getting monetization from viewers and vice versa play to earn view to earn those mechanisms coming in so that I've downloaded it. I'll, I'll see if I can share my, my platform in a minute. We'll have a look at that in, in more detail in a second. But it is absolutely phenomenal. Gaming as a project 
you can already see because it's launched as a platform, it's already accelerated itself from a marketing perspective. So as an investor, when you're looking at these new platforms launching, they're, they're starting with this stepping stone approach from the very beginning. Some projects like this have already done massive legwork in the traditional gaming spaces as well as what they're doing with their Web3 orientation as well. You see these huge numbers here just related specifically to gaming's performance or you know, from revenue aspects, statistics of users, etc. It's absolutely huge. 12 billion total impressions across our esports team in 2023. That's a huge number. And if anyone knows the esports sector like I do, you'll appreciate that number is absolutely significant. So as I said earlier, these guys have been going for some time. By the way, it's not a sponsored ad. I just love this. I think it's, I can't remember how I came across this project. Uh, to be honest, it was about a week or so ago. And I was just absolutely fascinated by it. And I thought, well, these guys have been going on for a long time. Why haven't they done this yet? But then there's all the testing. We know this. The platform itself launched, not necessarily the actual exchange element of it. This is where it's going to open up, in my opinion, open the floodgates to amazing amounts of new users, or at least investors that are going to be very encouraged by the price token and ultimately improve the uh, awareness of the actual game platform. So you can see here, uh, the GMRX originally on the EOS blockchain back then. Uh, loads of stuff has happened since then as well, of course. Um, some very interesting elements came more so in recent times where all the servers started kicking in, uh, the ability for developing games and obviously more games being added to the platform. And before you know it, you get all the way down here, NFT gaming. We talked about this in the GameFi uh, specific content video. Uh, where we talked about um, you owning digital assets that you can take from one game to another as long as it's applied within gaming law. Um, but for sure, even to that point, hopefully I can show you the platform. You can also convert these assets. You can convert the tokens into either merchandise or other assets in other games, or you can buy tokens related to that game. So you think of like, I don't think FIFA's on the platform, but you know you can get like the FIFA points, etc. I don't really get involved in all that stuff, but very interesting. Launched the version 2 of Watch to Earn, and then the progress is continuing. So that's coming out hopefully this quarter. If, I think it might have already started. Um, there's loads of things going on quite recently, and there's loads of things up and coming. Now, I'm not a huge fan of white papers and things. I don't really take too much attention to them, but I do like looking at the roadmaps to give a bit of a reflection of what might be coming. Um, and I'm quite excited about all of this. And I'm really excited about this as well, uh, the bridging gap. I did so many AMAs when I worked at blockchain gaming companies over the years, uh, talking about the bridging mechanism, what needs to be done educational wise and making it easier for people who are in the gaming of Web 2 to Web 3. But in the between, this is a 2.5. And that is very much people getting used to the opportunity of having both mechanisms working together. It's really interesting. Um, and of course, we said cloud computing collaborations. I'm, you know, it'd be absolutely amazing to see that development. Loads of other stuff going on. It goes all the way through towards the end of the year. Very, very interesting indeed. Of course, one of the other key aspects here uh, will be uh, the listing, <laughs> the token listing. This is why I'm quite mostly interested in the token itself. Um, I will just quickly show you this. So total supply of GMRX is 100 billion. 100% of the income from gaming users monetization rewards used to buy back GMRX. There's a bit down here is very interesting. So the breakdown, uh, we effectively allocate 90% of the revenue generated by our gamers computational power again to that point of the mechanism of that market 80 percent goes directly to gaming users as gmrx to utility token rewards for use on our platform compatible games and ecosystem three percent burned seven percent dedicated to stakers and your farmers so there's a whole aspect here about deflationary aspects um, and here's a bit of a breakdown about the token distribution which is pretty self-explanatory but also pretty fair and fairly similar to most um you know gaming platforms or gaming you know games themselves that are working towards this this element so we've got the tokenomics aspects here very interesting indeed here's a bit of an information as well about the gmrx tokenomics so for those that want to have a bit more of a deep dive you can definitely do that but it's, it's all ticking the boxes in my mind i think it's very fascinating um as we look further into this this point here so you've got the elements of watch to earn passive rewards for gaming 
or, or to fund their gaming. Gaming community is obviously huge, as we've spoken about already. True ownership of interoperable cross-game utility game assets. Absolutely gigantic point, that is. Absolutely huge. Access to exciting new generation of web-free games. Web 2 games with web-free integrations. Absolutely phenomenal opportunity here, in my opinion. You can see that there's Grand Theft Auto, Apex, for example. I know Apex has its own tokens that you can earn whilst playing these games and earn enough GMRX tokens to buy more points or whatever you need for your game in there. Um, maybe I don't need to show my actual platform. I haven't even got anything. I tried playing chess earlier. And I was absolutely useless. Uh, but I just wanted to see how it was all working. Connecting your wallet. Um, and also you kind of like have a monetization wallet within the platform. And then you have a wallet that's that's kind of like on onto the browser via Venly. Um, and this allows you to essentially coordinate the bridging of tokens into and out of the platform if you need to. Uh, but also obviously holding a wallet on the game platform is good because you can help with the monetization of the games, your viewing cap capabilities, etc, etc. So this leads me nicely to this, Seedify. This is why I'm getting excited. So there's a registration thing here. It was quite simple for me to do, just press the registration button. I do need to do a KYC for Seedify. I think I had one before, but I need to update it. It's been a couple of years since I used it. If you haven't used Game Launchpads before, um, and you want a bit of an intake on that, I will do a video in the next day or two. I'll try and do it before this one runs out. If you are interested in me doing that, let me know. But there's loads out there. But it's another opportunity or a platform for games um, or gaming platforms, gaming projects to launch a token. You usually have this process before a um, actual DEX offering or something on an exchange. So this is an opportunity for you to be able to convert Usually, uh, in this instance, the fund token is the Seedify token uh, to obtain this ability to stake for the reward or allocation of a gaming project. So in this instance, the GMRX token is up for grabs. I believe from what I was reading on this awesome article, which I'll leave a link to uh, at the end of this video as well. It's really in depth. It's absolutely fantastic to read through this. Please do that. Um, again, look at these numbers, 2.5 billion mobile gamers, 1.6 billion PC gamers alone. Abs Which is, of course, um, you know, phenomenal numbers as we've gone through already. But it's just down here uh, where we have a bit more of an interest around the token aspect of the game. So this is it here. Token type on the BNB chain. This is off the back of a recent announcement a year ago. Uh, in relation to the partnership revolutionizing the gaming industry. So these two, I mean, you know, BNB chain, Binance chain um, has been absolutely fantastic with launching games over the years. So that's reflecting on that. The 100 billion um, in terms of total supply, which is absolutely uh, huge. So you do have to take that into consideration um, when you're looking at the opportunity ahead as to how those tokenomics will work but also um you know just keep in mind what kind of price points we might be looking at the only thing that's not listed at the moment is the ido price um initial dex offering and also the listing dates so this is where it gets quite interesting because we should know quite soon in regards to allocations of the tokens we will then know the ido price and then of course that then gives us a spectrum of opportunity in the future when we're about to get a listing now depending on what exchange that is or depending on maybe even if it's a swap site like uniswap or something like this we are ahead of the game and people may sit out there and go well i see all these game launches all the time and things like this but i never get the opportunity to um, get at the beginning of of a project and this is pretty much how most of it is done so it's definitely a good advantage there. In terms of the Seedify one in, in general, there's a 600,000 USDT allocation to this pool. So you can kind of envision that whether you've got $50, $100, $1,000, I think this will go quite quickly personally. Um, it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't in this day and age for gaming or new gaming launch projects. Um, so it's really just a question of risk management um, only invest what you can afford to lose. All of these usual narratives. It's not financial advice that I'm giving here. It's just my opinion and also my thought process and what's happened with my experiences in the past of launch pads. I've not only been involved in the investing perspective, I've also been involved in the marketing and the setup of these kind of things as well. So I know how they work. 
and you've got this here, the vesting period, um, this is uh, very much around the aspect of how long you might need before you can actually involve um, the buying and selling momentum. But there's also aspects as well of um, vesting in terms of getting money back at, in different stages uh, this helps people or the project in itself to not just have a pump and dump session within a 24-hour period and you also tend to sometimes have cliff edges um, what they call that for the teams as well so they might have like maybe a year or two before they're actually allowed to sell on the market themselves so that's just protection of consumers and ultimately they want this project to grow they want it to perform and have longevity and that's how they're going to do it so there's um, instructions here generally about Seedify. If you want me, as I said, to do a, a video dedicated to launch pads, how to get involved with those, how to start those up, what ones are the best ones to look out for, etc. Let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely do one as soon as possible. And if really you want one for this one, I'll definitely get one out before um, the launch of this. So the full recommendation here, if you're interested in gaming, um, is to make sure that you get involved on the Seedify to at least register. You have to connect uh, the wallet, of course. Um, and then once that registration has happened, just bear in mind that you do maybe need to do some um, KYC uh, in this as well. Uh, but as I said, I can do a video on this. It's not a problem at all. And um, we can go from there, really. I think, in my opinion, um, literally my opinion, not financial advice, I do think that this project has a massive future. Um, I mentioned a few other platforms previously. Ultra, I had great success with that one when it first launched. Again, it I wouldn't say it disappeared. It just became a bit quiet and you know, production-wise, it's not fully there. But as I said, with this particular platform, a lot of the traditional games are already on there. And we talked about in past videos about you know Grand Theft Auto having its own currency, this, that, and the other. And that's still possible, obviously. But the fact of the matter is you can play these games already on platforms like this and make money off them by earning play to earn or even viewing to earn as well. Um, I use Steam and I remember a couple of years ago they categorically said that they weren't going to allow crypto related projects or games on their platform. I'm not sure if that's changed recently. I need to double check for research purposes. But this gives the massive advantage of platforms like this. Um, I don't have loyalty. I use Steam because it has a lot of my retro games on there like Delta Force and Z and Worms and all this stuff. But I would have no hesitation like I did yesterday to download this platform and start playing. Uh, like I said, I just started off with chess and slowly but surely some rewards started coming in. Um, but, you know, don't sit there thinking you have to play all, all day. Um, you know, make sure you have a balanced life, obviously. But the fact of the matter is there are, you know, dedicated gamers out there. And there's nothing wrong with that if people want to do that. Then they have now the opportunity to use their time in gaming to monetize. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to wrap this video up pretty much now, guys. Um, just wanted to throw that opportunity out there. It's very rare, as I said, that I do videos on like gems as such. If you want more videos like this, let me know. I do have a big list of them, um, but I tend not to do too many. Um, I have to have like a really firm belief behind something before I do it. Um, we're not sponsored by any of these projects at all. It's just off my own back based on market research, based on my personal experiences, of course, as well, both in the investment world and my experience in the web free world of working in this industry um, to, to try and provide some form of information that might help or at least excite people with new opportunities. So let me know what you think about this. If you know about this already and there's anything I've missed or you want to talk about more detail, let me know in the comments. But I'm going to wrap that up there. Thanks so much for watching this one. We'll see you in the next, hopefully, gem video that I provide. See you soon. Bye-bye.